In this video we'll be taking apart the 8849 Hike. This phone has an incredible 1200 lumens flashlight, which we'll take a closer look at during the teardown. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, we'll need to remove the SIM tray. Taking a look at the SIM and micro SD tray, we can see a red rubber gasket around the opening. There are now 12 T5 or Torx 5 screws which need to be removed. Here's a better look at the rugged, strong, plastic rubberized back housing. Looking at the inside of the back cover, we see the flex cable for the NFC antenna. As for the glass camera lens cover, that can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying it off. So you don't have to take apart the back cover to replace that. We'll start off by removing two Phillips screws. Thirteen additional Phillips screws need to be removed. The top plastic motherboard cover can now be lifted up from the right to the left, but be careful since there's still a cable attached to the back side of the board. The battery cables can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. The blue coaxial cable on the bottom right side of the board can be disconnected by just popping it off. This is the back camping or torch light as well as the flashing emergency lights on the bottom. Once the padding over the battery has been removed, we have access to these flex cables, including these two flex cables which connect the main board to the subboard. Fifteen additional Phillips screws need to be removed. Once the main board is flipped over, this cable can be disconnected. Taking a closer look at the top plastic motherboard cover, we can see the antenna lines drawn which are the light gray color lines, the dual microphones covered by a rubber gasket, the dual LED flash, the night vision lights, as well as a rubber gasket around the speaker opening. Here's a look at the other side. Moving on to the motherboard, we see the primary 50 megapixel Sony IMX766 camera, an 8 megapixel telephoto lens in the center, as well as a 64 megapixel night vision lens. There is also graphite film over the shield to help transfer heat, as well as a liquid damage indicator sticker which is the white sticker on the top corner. The camera flex cables can be disconnected by just popping them off. Looking at the back, we can see the RAM and processor, as well as thermal pads on top of these chips, and a layer of copper film on the back shield to help transfer heat. Here's a better look at the processor. Five additional Phillips screws are holding down the midframe. This flex cable now needs to be peeled off from the midframe.
So as far as the battery assembly goes, there are multiple batteries which are soldered together with the controller board on the bottom, which add up to the 23,800 milliamp hours of capacity. However, if you look at the label on the battery, it may show a different amount, but that's only because the voltage on these batteries are different than standard smartphone batteries. So if you calculate the voltage on these batteries, you do get the advertised 23,800 milliamp hours. There is also a copper heat pipe, which runs in between the batteries to help transfer heat. And this flex cable is for the infrared or IR blaster. There are also two thermal pads on this midframe, which sit over the processor and RAM to help transfer heat. Five Phillips screws need to be removed, which are holding on the 1200 lumens flashlight assembly. So here we have a look at the 1200 lumens flashlight. This is screwed onto the aluminum plate, which also has a heatsink to transfer heat with the help of the internal fan, because this will definitely create some heat. Nine more Phillips screws need to be removed. Here's a look at the Simon micro SD reader, which is located on the secondary board. Looking at the other side, we see the flex cable for the proximity sensor. This is the 32 megapixel front facing camera. Taking a look at the subboard, we see the charger port located in the center with a rubber gasket around it, as well as the headphone jack located next to that. Here's a look at the other side. The primary microphone is located on the bottom corner, which is held in place with a cure in place gasket, and the same goes for the earpiece speaker which is located on top. If you needed to replace either of those, you'd have to use an X-Acto knife or a razor blade to carefully cut them out. The internal fan is located over here, and this is the vibrator motor. The vibrator motor is held in place with adhesive, so if you needed to replace that, just apply some heat and gently pry it off. There is a red rubber gasket around the frame, as well as the fan assembly opening, which will help keep water and debris from entering the foam. If you needed to replace the flex cables for the buttons on either side, those are also held in place with cure in place gaskets, so you'd have to remove the T5 or Torx 5 screws, which are holding the metal plates on either side of the phone, and then remove those plates giving you access to cutting out those gaskets. As for replacing the screen, if you're replacing the screen without the housing pre-attached, at this point you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen to the housing, making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening, and reassemble the phone. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.